This is how those that knew Sabina Nessa want to remember her, a smiling and happy primary school teacher. Her murder has left her family, seen arriving here at the Old Bailey, devastated and angry. Another shocking case of violence against women. My sister was um, funny, uh, lovable, caring. It's been horrendous. Um, it's broken us deeply. Um, we have never thought that we'd be in this situation. Like, um, you would hear this on the news, but you wouldn't hear that it was happening to you. Getting that phone call saying that she's not here anymore just was like the worst case, like a bad dream. And this is the man who murdered her. On the 25th of February this year, Kochi Selamaj, a petrol station worker from Eastbourne and an Albanian national, pleaded guilty. The 36-year-old had driven to Kidbrook in south-east London from his home in September last year to carry out a premeditated attack on a woman with extreme violence. He targeted the 28-year-old as she made her way through this park to meet a friend. At this supermarket, video shows him purchasing a rolling pin before returning to his car. It's there he swaps it for a motoring warning triangle. Selamaj used it to strike Sabina 34 times, leaving her unconscious. He then dragged her into a long grassy bank. The prosecution maintains there was a sexual motive. Number plate recognition cameras helped lead detectives to his address, where a search uncovered the shoes he'd been wearing. Blood found on the trainers matched the victim. Multiple pieces of evidence have brought it all together and, in my opinion, put Selimaj in a position where he had no alternative other than plea guilty. That was the strength of the evidence. But it is what happened earlier that raises questions. At lunchtime on the day of the attack, he tried to check into a room early. He'd booked at the Grand Hotel in Eastbourne. But staff had become concerned and called the police. But they didn't attend, claiming the matter was resolved. Selamaj would later return after he'd committed the murder, still wearing the same clothes. After my sister's attack, I was scared to walk down the streets alone. I would come home during the day, as long as there's daylight. The thought of coming home in the night was scary, making sure that I would walk down the main road rather than the side roads now. This case, like that of Sarah Everard, has once again reignited the debate about the safety of women in public places. But the sentence handed down is unlikely to reassure them that things are going to change.